Hi, I'm Hassan, the lecturer here at the Institute of Medical Education. And today we're going to look at a GAMSAT Section 3 chemistry uh, unit, specifically uh, redox reactions, so oxidation and reduction. And we're going to take a look here at four questions. So before we begin, uh, you can pause the screen now, have a read of the stimulus, and I'll flick through the four questions so you can pause the screen and get an idea of what we're going to be discussing today. So you can pause the screen now for the stimulus in question 93. So you can pause for question 94, question 95, and question 96. Okay, cool. So hopefully you've paused there, had a good look at the questions, and read the stimulus, and we can begin. So oxidation and reduction, redox reactions, it's something that I see students, um, I mean, they don't struggle, but it's, if, if you can get it, it's very powerful because I know in the GAMSA, they love asking questions that can trick students up. And oxidation and reduction reactions are the ones that they love to pick on because they know that if you're not going to prepare your chemistry and understand how um, redox reactions work, you're not going to get the marks. So if, with the first question, so I mean, in the stimulus, we're told pretty much the um, how to calculate oxidation states. And with the first question, kind of the same in all GAMSA or ACER exams, they like to get the ball rolling. The first question says, which of the following is the correct oxidation state for copper sulfate? Now, the way I would look at this is let's just split this into the ion, so the ionic form. So I will just get my pen out here. So some previous talk there. So what I do is I would just say, okay, we've got our copper ions here. We don't know what its um, uh, what its oxidation state is going to be, and then we've got our sulfate ions here. And we know sulfate ions have an oxidation state minus two. So it's important to note that because this compound here is neutral, very easy. So it has to equal zero. So oxidation state has to equal zero. If that's minus two and it's neutral, then this has to equal two plus. So that's a very easy, simple one to get the ball rolling. So the answer is two plus. So now it is going to get a bit more challenging with the questions as we move forward, as you've probably noticed. So let's go to question 94. The question asks, which of the following is the reducing agent? I'll get my pen out. So which of the following is the reducing agent in manganese oxide plus iron? So iron with two plus, which goes to manganese two plus plus iron three plus. So it's asking which is the reducing agent. So this is a trick. This is something they like doing in the GAM set as well, because straight away students might say, reducing and think, ah, oh, which one's getting reduced? No. So in the stimulus, it says here, a reducing agent undergoes oxidation, and you'd ensure, obviously, an oxidizing agent would undergo reduction. So we have to figure out here in this um, equation, or this reaction, sorry, which um, molecule or ion is getting oxidized. So let's have a look. So, I mean, it is pretty straightforward if we look at it and just say Fe2 plus. So you have to draw the half reactions. Let's just draw the half reactions. Fe2 plus, Fe3 plus, and we've got the manganese oxide minus is going to Mn2 plus. I mean, you can see already, get a different color pen, that clearly oxidation, so we know oil rig, this is what I remember, the, or, the uh, acronym, oil rig, oil rig, that's how I remember it. Oxidation is loss of electrons, reduction is gain of electrons. So we can see clearly here, we're moving from a state of 2 plus to 3 plus, which means we're losing an electron. So we're losing an electron here. So that's how it's represented. So clearly, just to, I mean, the answer is obviously going to then therefore be reducing agents. So which one's going on, undergone oxidation? We know that 
the Fe2 plus is going to under oxidation. So that's the correct answer. However, just to quickly go through how to figure out the oxidation state of this molecule here, just in case you're wondering, um, it's you can see here that whatever it was before, at the end of the reaction, it's going to be 2 plus manganese. So what's the oxidation state of the manganese here? So if you take a look, we know that it's MnO4 minus 1. So it has to equal minus 1. So the oxidation states of the manganese and the oxygen have to equal minus 1. So if I get a different colored pen, I'll get green. So we can see, therefore, so oxygen is going to have a state of minus 2. So if we do minus 2 times 4, so it's 4 oxygens, it's going to be minus 8. So it has to or equal minus 1, remember? Which means X is manganese. So that means if we move it across, so it's going to be X is going to equal plus 7. So the oxidation state of the manganese is plus 7. I mean, it kind of gives it away here in the answer, in the, in the answer stems or the possible answer stem. But that's how you figure it out. If you're finding it difficult to work out the oxidation states, I um, suggest you do, I highly suggest you do go back, have a look um, and brush up on the, uh, brush up on your skills, I guess, because it is something they like to uh, tease out in the GAMSA and they like to question you on. So the oxidizing agent would therefore, if that's the reduce, if the reducing agent is Fe2+, the oxidizing agent is going to be the Mn7+. So that's going to be, that is what's getting oxidized. So, sorry, the oxidizing agent is what's getting reduced. So the manganese 7 plus is getting reduced. The iron 2 plus is getting oxidized. So the iron 2 plus is therefore the reducing agent and the manganese 7 plus is therefore the oxidizing agent. So try to get wrap your head around that and you'll be fine. So now is when it gets a bit... Uh, it's where the training rules fall off. So you've been told here that redox reactions are balanced based on these following rules. And the question saying the redox reaction involving manganese um, or permanganate, uh, so it goes to manganese 2 plus and iron 2 plus goes to iron 3 plus. And it's asking which is the... Um, the redox reaction involving these reactions. So there, you probably have an idea of balancing redox reactions, but there is there is a certain flow. There is a certain um, way you go about this. And I'll tell you how I would do it. And if you do it this way, um, you won't have to worry about getting stuck in the gaps or, in, or um, getting uh, literally hitting a brick wall. So what I like to do first is let's just write these out. I'll get the pen out in a second. But if we write these out, the first thing we like to do, so I'll just get the pen out. I'll probably get a new page. And I'll just write it out. And then we can start from fresh without even looking at the answers and then pick out which is the correct one. So if I just go to um, screen brush, let's do a whiteboard. Okay, so if I get the... Um, yep, let me see a nice black color. All right, so let's draw this. So let's write it out. We've got manganese or permanganate goes to, so let's just put the arrows here, goes to Mn2+. plus. Then we've got the iron 2 plus goes to Fe 3 plus. So the first thing we need to do, this is what I would do, this is what you're probably told to do, is let's just balance the atoms. So has the atom number changed? So we've got excluding first, excluding the oxygen and the hydrogens. Let's just balance everything excluding the oxygen and the hydrogens. So we've got manganese here. And manganese, it hasn't changed the atom number. Iron here and iron here hasn't changed an iron number. So we're sweet for the atom atoms. So let's now next balance the hydrogen and the oxygens. 
or in this case, obviously the oxygens. So what we do, which we were told in the stimulus, is you just cancel it out with water. So if I just grab a red here, so we can see clearly that um, it's going to be, if, if we take a look here, it's got manganese O4 minus. If we've got four O's, so four oxygens, that means we have to balance it over here with four waters. H2O. So you've got four oxygens. But because we've done that, we have to add four protons to this side now. Because, oh, sorry, eight protons. So we've got H2 times four is eight protons. And this side, luckily, we don't have to change anything because there are no oxygens or hydrogens. Now, once we've balanced the oxygens and hydrogens, next we have to look at the transfer of electrons. So we can change the color here to green. So if we're going to transfer the electrons here, let's just take a look. Uh, this one's probably the easier one. Let's understand what's happening first. So we're, we've got a two plus ion and we've got a ion and we've got a three plus ion, which means from this to this, we've lost an electron. So that means we have to go Fe3 plus plus electron because we've lost an electron. So if we take a look here at the manganese or permanganate, MnO4 minus, what we're getting is a, if we just, if I probably put it over here, so MnO4 minus. So remember, if we balance it, it has to equal minus one. So that means it's going to equal minus 8x. So mn is going to equal 7. So 7 plus. So we went from 7 plus to 5 plus. Therefore, we've gained 5 electrons. So can you see how if you add 5 electrons, what you're doing is you are reducing the manganese because you're adding five electrons. So what you're left with is this now. So we've done all we have to do. Now what we have to finally do is balance the electrons. So we've got up here five electrons. Down here we've got one electron. So we've got to therefore times everything by five. Let's give it a nice color. So that means we've got to times this by five. And therefore, because if we're timing this, we have to times everything else by five to balance it. So what's going to happen, therefore, is we're going to get, if we cross it out now, so let's just cross out what is the same. So we can cross out five electrons, five electrons. And what we're going to be left with is... manganese plus our 5fe2 plus plus 8 protons then goes to because we're joining the two equations together now manganese 2 plus plus 5fe 3 plus plus 4H2O. So that is your answer. So if we go back to our original, so I'll probably just cancel this. Um, where to go? You can see clearly, therefore, as we just worked out without even, sorry, um, let's go out of the whiteboard. You can see clearly, so the answer is going to be, so it's a good thing I left that up there, this. So without even looking, I just literally did that from scratch. So without even looking um, at the options, we worked out the actual redox reaction. Now, it's going to get a bit interesting 
for the next question, so let me just remove all of this. So for the final question, it's actually pretty straightforward, the final question, because it's similar. It's the exact same principle, except in this instance, it's a bit tricky because you've got to work backwards. So you've got to find the half reactions from the final reaction. In the previous one, you were given the half reactions. So this one, it's actually, again, let's just work through it systematically because a lot of the times I see students, the issue is the training rules fall off because they try to rush the answer. If we just take it systematically, obviously in the GAM set, you might be a pro and do this quickly, but let's just do it systematically. Because if you do it systematically, you'll get the right answer. So let's just open up our whiteboard. So what I'm going to do first is let's just find the half reactions. So in this instance, the half reactions are going to be... So our half reactions are going to be... So it just ignore, in this instance, the balancing and um, ignore the, the water and uh, the hydrogens. Let's just do it from half reactions. So it's going to be... CH3, CH2OH, so it's going to be a carboxylic acid, plus the, chroma, the chromate or the chromium molecule. And it's going to go to our, um, well, CH3, COOH. So just bear in mind, if it's going to be CO2H, it's going to be a CO. H. So that's what it's going to look like. So um, just keep that in mind. Or it could be based on resonance. It could be that. But um, just keep in mind it's going to be a double bond with the carbon. It's important when we assign oxidation states. But we'll get to that. Um, so, and the chromium. So we've got the half reactions. So this is going to go to this. And this is going to go to this. Let's write that out on our whiteboard and we can work through it systematically. So what I'm going to do is get rid of that, open up our whiteboard, and just start from scratch. So let's start from scratch. I'll get a black pen. So let's just write it out. CH3, CH2, so the half reactions, remember, goes to, so let's just put it, we don't know which ones are going to oxidize and reduce just yet, but let's just do that. It's going to be CH3, CO2H. And underneath, we'll have the chromium and the oxygen, so the chromate. Cr2O7, 2 minus, put an arrow here, it's going to be Cr3 plus. Okay, so remember what we said at the beginning. Uh, with these sorts of um, redox reactions, let's be systematic. First and foremost, let's balance the atoms. So over here, there's the same amount of carbons, which is fantastic. We've obviously um, added a water molecule, but we'll do that in the next step. So that's fine. We don't have to balance this here just yet. So balance the atoms, excluding, remember, oxygen and hydrogen. We'll do that in the next step. Let's just do other atoms first. Down here, we've got dichromate or dichromium. Over here, we've got a single, which means we have to add a two in front of this. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Secondly, we're going to have to balance hydrogens and oxygens. So over here, what's happened is we have gained water to form this molecule. So, therefore, you can straight away ensure which one's getting oxidized and which one's getting reduced just by this fact. But we can probably use a different color here. We'll use green. So, we've obviously added H2O here. And you can see over here, what we've got is a... Um, so, we've obviously got to balance it with the protons. So we've got to balance it with how many protons do we have? So it's going to be one, two. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. On this side, we have one, two, three, 
4, so therefore that's going to be 4 protons. So it's going to be plus 4 protons. Now let's do the other side. The other side, we've lost our water. So, because there's no water here. So what we're going to do, or we've lost our oxygen. So we're going to plus our H2O. And on this side, obviously what we have to do first is actually balance it. So let's balance it first for oxygen. So we've got seven oxygens here. So we're going to put a seven in front. And because we've got seven in front of the H2, that means we've got 14 hydrogens. So plus 14 protons. Cool. So let's, now that we've balanced our atoms, our hydrogen, uh, um, hydrogens and oxygens, let's go down to electrons now. And this is going to tell us whether or not it's going to be oxidation or reduction. Something to remember um, that's easy to, to guess straight away is, generally speaking, the electrons are going to be on the same side as the protons. So you know straight away the electrons for this reaction are going to be here. We don't know how many electrons just yet, but on this side it's going to be here. So just remember that little sneaky trick. So the, ox the electrons are usually going to follow the protons. So you know straight away then here we're gaining an electron. So this is reduced. And here we're losing an electron. So this is oxidized. So without even doing the oxidation states, you know straight away that this is getting oxidized and this is getting reduced. Now, we need to know how many electrons are transferred. So this is probably the easier one. Let's just start off here. So we've got over here the oxidation state of the dichromate or um, with the oxygen like, molecule. We've got, remember, it's got to equal 2 minus. So let's just put that here. 7 times minus 2 is minus 14. So therefore, that means we're going to have to make something to equal minus 2. So this answer, x, has to be 12, which means our CR is 6 plus. So obviously, times 2 is going to be, because we've got two chromiums here, right? Dichromate. So we know that the oxygen, um, sorry, the oxidative state of our CR is 6 plus. And then it's going to be total. 12 plus because there's two so it's a 12 plus over here and we have to balance it on the other side over here we've got six plus okay because you remember two times three is six plus and just make sure as well i just got to double check it is uh balanced it's going to be um Yep, so what we'll do here, so the difference is this has 12, this has 6. Therefore, you've got to add 6 electrons here to make it 6 here to balance it. So it's going to be 6. So, so if, you, if you can't conceptualize that, have a look. So 6 electrons plus 12 plus is going to be 6 plus. So think of it that way. So it's balanced. So therefore, now we have 6 electrons. So we've balanced this equation here. Now let's balance this equation. So I might clear it up a bit just so you can see that easier. Okay, so this equation, hopefully you're still following on so far because it does take time, but again, be systematic so you don't mis make a mistake. These sorts of questions in the GAM set, if you do get them, will be worth, if they do scale a lot because most students probably won't have the time to do this or they just won't even bother and they'll just skip it or they'll just guess. So getting this correct in the game set can definitely help your mark So um, and your score. Now, oxidation states of carbon, carbon groups is an important one to note. So this is a whole different realm in its own because carbon can have different oxidation states based on what it's bound to. So just quickly, I don't want to um, bore you too much, but um, the way it works is, is it based on what carbon is bound to. So if carbon is bound to a carbon, oxidation state counts to zero. If carbon is bound to an hydrogen, which is a plus one, the oxidation state gets minus one. If it's bound to an oxygen, which is a minus one, oxidation state goes up by plus one. 
So in this example, what we have is carbon is bound to a carbon to an oxygen and to two hydrogens. So that means it's bound to those. That means it's going to be zero plus minus one minus one because there's two hydrogens and then there's an oxygen so it's going to be plus one so remember it's just a counteractor because it's a neutral molecule it has to equal zero remember so therefore um it's going to be so carbon is going to equal minus one plus minus one or minus one minus one is minus two plus one is minus one so the oxidation state of carbon here is minus one the oxidation state of the carbon here um, does not change. So if you take a look, the oxidation state here is the same as here. It's going to be the same number. So that's not changing. Uh, no, I shouldn't have done that. Let's leave it. Um, so the oxidation state here is minus one. And the other carbon, let's see. So it's bound to a carbon. So it's going to be zero. It's bound to an oxygen. Now remember at the beginning how I said if it's bound, it's a double bond that's important because. If the carbon's bound to a double bond, you just times it by two. So if it's negative one for the oxygen, therefore it becomes negative two, which means carbon has to be two plus for that for that um, uh, oxygen. And then there's another oxygen down here, so it's going to be plus one. So that's going to be plus three. So you can see here that the um, carbon has lost. An amount of electrons and look if, if you're still finding it difficult to follow oxidation states for carbon groups or carbonyl groups um, I suggest you do obviously do some further um, uh, I guess research or uh, study into this I mean if you do have any questions you can uh, pop them down below in the comment section we'll answer them but I mean if you want to do more research because the oxidation of carbon is a oxidation reduction of carbon is a whole nother world. And I do suggest you do look into it um, because it is, again, powerful if you understand it. But we can see clearly that we're moving from minus one to plus three. So we've lost four electrons. So therefore, four electrons. So now we're not finished. Even though these equations are balanced, there's one more thing we have to look at. The electrons here are different to the electrons here. So the last thing we have to do now is balance the electron number. So the easiest way to do that, so now let's go across. What I would do is I would um, find the common denominator, obviously. Um, so that's going to be um, 12. So it's going to be 6 by 2 is 12, 4 by 2, uh, 3 is 12. So I would times this whole side by 2 and this whole side by 3. And what you're going to end up with, this is going to be a very long, long equation. But again, bear with me, we're getting there. So it's going to equal, let's get the different pen out here. So it's going to equal, let's start with the top. Uh, let's just start with this side. So it's going to be 3 CH3 CH2OH plus 3 H2O plus Cr2O7. So it's going to be times 2, sorry. 2. Let me just fix that. plus 2Cr2O7 plus 28H plus plus 12 electrons goes to, so I might just draw the arrow here because it's going to be too long on that side, 3CH3CO2H plus 12 H plus plus 12 electrons plus 4 Cr3 plus plus 14 H2O. So once we write all of that out, okay, I'll get my red pen out. 
Then we can start crossing off the common denominator. So 12 electrons goes off. We've got 12 here and 28 there. So it's going to be 16 protons. So it's going to be 16 protons. And we have three waters here, 14 waters there. So we get rid of that. It's going to be 11 waters here. And there you go. So that's going to be your answer. So it's going to be 3 CH3 CH2OH plus 2 Cr2O7 plus 16 protons goes to, so the reaction goes to 3 CH3 CO2H plus 4 Cr3 plus plus 11 H2O. So if we go back there for, let's just go back. Um, it's going to be, uh, where is it? This one up here. So we've got that. Let me just cross check it. Um, show to brush. Let me just get rid of this. Sorry. So what did we have? We had three CH plus two CIA yeah, plus 16 H plus three. Yep. Plus four. Yep. Plus 11. There you go. So again, I just worked that out right now. Um, that was amazing, actually. I don't know how I just did that, but um, it's nice when it works out. So let me just uh, hide the brush bar now. So this is your answer. Now, <laughs> that was a very long time, but you can see how um, if you're systematic with these redox reactions, you can get the answer. I know obviously in the GAMSAT, I went through it step by step here. You'd be a bit quicker in the GAMSAT and you can probably find little tricks to find the answer. but don't skimp on the foundations. If you get the foundations correct, you'll get the answer correct. That's the key here. If you need any more help um, or any more clarification, you can post your queries down in the comment section. If you need any extra help, you can contact us directly. We'd love to help you and uh, we're available anytime. Thanks. Bye now.